All right, Uncle Sam FM here, and this is episode nine of my American football series, and we are halfway through the 2018 season at this point in my game. Um, as you can see, looking at the league table there on the home screen, I am running away with the Western Conference right now in MLS. I've um, played 17, and I've won 13 of those matches, uh, and have no losses, so... Yeah, I would say things are going pretty well results-wise, um, but when you, and we'll look at it here in a second, but when you really examine the, um, the, the way we're getting the results, I'm not 100% pleased. Um, just looking, you look at our last few league matches, it's a bunch of one-goal results, right? Um, we got a um, you know, late win against FC Dallas, our arch-rival. Thanks to Rubel Kaba, my striker, my draft, my recently drafted striker, um, who scored in the 85th, yeah, 85th minute to win two to one against at Dallas, which that actually is a really good result because I was play, I've got an open cup match midweek, so I played, um, well, almost a second team against FC Dallas and still came away with the win, so that was a good, really good result. But the five matches before. Uh, the FC Dallas result were I were all I only scored one goal right so if I was going to win those I had to keep a clean sheet which I could not do obviously against Seattle and against um, the Galaxy but and we're going to watch this one the Galaxy goal I mean it was Ibra um, Zlatan scores what is an unbelievable there's a free kick right, a direct free kick, what can you do about that, right, so I, I mean, it's kind of hard to be overly critical in a game which we obviously dominated when you peruse the statistics, um, but yeah, so Ibra scores that goal, which is just absolutely phenomenal, so um, yeah, I mean, that's, that is what it is, um, I mean, but how can you complain, right, when you, when you had a stretch there where we won 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 matches in a row, and they weren't all dominant, there were some, right, like we, we pretty much ran San Jose off the field, um, three goals against Atlanta United in, you know, in our championship, MLS Cup championship rematch there, um, and then 3 nothing at home against Minnesota. But, you know, most of the rest of these were, you know, one-goal matches. Um, so, you know, we've been getting the results. But you can almost say we've kind of had to grind them out, which is really not our style of play, right? We're, um, we're a possession-attacking team. And so, happy with where we are on the table. Not 100% happy with how we got there. So we've, you know, we've got some work to do. Now the good news about that is that I'm going to be able to use a lot of these games to start the second half of the season to start developing guys, right? So I may not roll a whole youth team out there until we get towards the end and I've got things really locked up. But, you know, I'll be able to play a game where I've got a couple 18-year-olds out there, maybe a couple of recently drafted players um, who normally wouldn't be playing but now I can because I've, my position is relatively safe. Um, and in MLS, really, as long as you're in the playoffs, you're, you're okay. You, you have a chance, right? And so, um, but obviously I want to win that supporter shield so we lock up the Champions League spot. So, um, so, but that's, so that is kind of the good news. Looking at the squad and kind of our, uh, I've got the stats, my statistics view up. Um, you can kind of see how we've gotten there. Albert Elise, obviously, has been a big part with he he's far out in front in goal scored right which we're hey you saw the results we're not a big goal scoring team right now um but he has been providing the goals for the most part with 13 in 16 appearances so that's good um we you know we need more production and you know the the production from pena and minotas is disappointing to say the least right they're my other two they're my wingers i need more goals from them they only have three each now, Minotas has been providing a lot of assists, so the Minotas to Elise combination has been good. But we need Minotas to start finishing some of his chances because he gets some, right? Um, another kind of disappointing um, look at, you know, our, is, is Tomas Martinez. Uh, he's my number 10. I need him to be creating chances. But when you look 
had his. He's only got one assist. I do also want him to score more than one goal in fourteen, right? He. I would hope that at the end of the year he would have somewhere between five and ten, but he's he's not on that pace right now. Um, one thing though, you look at his um, key passes, right? He's got thirty five, so that kind of tells me that he is at least, you know, creating chances, but we're just not finishing them, which is that's probably pretty accurate. I have this kind of feeling about FM too that. The developers know that you know we'll be able to create a system that's kind of like like ours, where we are going to create a lot of point blank chances, and so they take those, they make your likelihood of scoring those chances a little less, right? So that you, like I've had some guys miss some sitters, uh, a lot more sitters than what it should be, you know. Like somehow there was one game, I don't remember which one it was, but uh, Elise or somebody had a ball, I mean, we're talking two yards from the goal, and somehow he skied it over, which I know happens in football, but it happens way too often, it feels like, to me, in this game. So, but, you know, like we said, we're getting the results. And, you know, maybe if I get the players who have better finishing attributes, we'll, we'll score more. So um, so that is the goal. So, I, But we do, need to get, we do need to be finishing the chances better than what we are. Um, looking at Martinez, one thing I will say um, – he needs to get better. His teamwork is only a nine. His decisions is only a nine. Um, yeah, so those are attributes that need to improve, or else I've got to. He's getting to that age now where he he's he's getting close to his maximum development, and so if he doesn't improve those areas, I got to start looking somewhere else. Um, and we lose Gill at the end of the season. I don't think I'm going to try and keep him. Sometimes I'll bring in a lone guy and and try and make the deal permanent, but I, I just don't. He's 24. Um, he's got decent attributes in some areas, but he's never going to be the, the guy that's going to, that I'm going to want long term. So I'm going to let Gil go when his loan ends at the end of the year. So that means where am I going to go? Who am I going to, who's going to fill that number 10 slot? So this is, this is kind of a look into my process when I'm thinking about stuff like this. Um, one guy I've got on the squad right now is Rodrigo Torres. He's a draft pick, 22. Um, he needs to develop his teamwork, but he has a 15 in vision and a 15 in decisions. So if we can get that passing rating up a little bit, he's pretty close to having some of the important attributes that I look for out of a number 10. Um, but then I've also got some guys on loan. Um, so like Dervol Dos Santos at Phoenix. Um, he's one guy I'm looking at. He's only 18, so obviously he's got some work to do, but he does have a 14 in teamwork. Um, you know, visions, decisions, passing, that's all got to get better. You know, but he is young. Um, Wellington Bueno, Brazil, another Brazilian number 10 candidate. Uh, he's on loan at North Carolina. Um, there's some hope for him. Um, who else? There's a couple other guys, I think. Well, I know this guy. Uh, there's a Ghanaian from, well, he's at North Carolina also. But his determination at 19 kind of tells me that he and his personality is determined. So I'm really kind of, I think he right now, if I had to guess who my next number 10 is going to be, um, he's it. Right? He's only 19, so he's got some, develop, he's got some developing. Um, well, he's, he's going to develop, hopefully. Um, but, you know, he's already close, right? His decisions is already a 16, and his vision is a 15, and his passing is 13. Right there makes him, those three things right there make him a candidate to be starting right now. Um, but there are some areas he's got to improve. So, um, you know, we're going to let him be on loan this year at Carolina, and then maybe next year we bring him on the full squad, see what he can do. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of my process, kind of how I look at it. And I'll do this for almost every position, right, because... Martinez is, is close to the age to where he's maxed out, and so he and he's mid twenty. So this is about when I start to look for selling people, anyway. Um, and you know, if you're going to sell somebody, you better have somebody in mind to take their spot. So, so without further ado, let's get into our open cup match. I got a tough draw for the first round. Atlanta United is good, um, and they've had a thirteen day layoff. 
right? If you look at their schedule, their last game was against Miami FC almost two, well, 10 days, sorry, 10 days ago. So they're going to be rested. Um, my guys are too. Um, but, you know, that's, it's, that, I mean, it's, it's not going to be my typical Open Cup match where I'm playing against a fatigued team. Now, they do have some international call-ups that have hurt them a little bit. They've lost their goalkeeper. They've lost Darlington Nagby. Um, Kyoto, those guys are all gone to the World Cup. Whereas I did lose Elise, so that hurts me. So that means I've got to fill that striker spot. I'm going to be um, bringing in Rubel Kaba to do that. Hopefully he can put something away. He's got a high finishing attribute. So um, he's really, I mean, that's really the reason that I'm using him. It's because of his finishing. Hopefully we can get some crosses in and you can put one or two away. <clears throat> but, you know, if he doesn't, that means we're out. And so it'll help us, like, as far as fixture congestion. We won't have to worry about open cup matches anymore. But I like to win the cup. So, uh, so here we go. Looking at this team, I mean, oh, man, these guys are good. Like, Almiron is one of the best players in the league. Vasquez is, is a... I don't think he's a very... He's a great header. And 13 heading. He's jumping. He's not a ter he's not a huge threat, but I still have to think about it. So, let's get into it. Um, ignore the phrase, play your natural game, and then, of course, the classic. I have faith in you. Now, um, opposition instructions. Mm. I want to tackle Perez hard because he is injured. Which I know that's ethically questionable, but you know, let's see what Barco. Barco is kind of a crosser, so let's force him in. Normally, I would be forcing the wingers wide, but let's get him in. Lalba. Yeah, let's. He's not a great passer. Probably a better crosser. So let's force him into. This may end up being a mistake, but we'll see what happens, right? Probably should have evaluated that before the match, but uh, that way you guys can kind of see what I think when I go into opposition instructions. <clears throat> uh. I used to do the rotation as necessary, and he's a natural choice. So one thing you might notice about me, I've got a bit of a wound right here on my face. All right, so as we start here, yesterday I went um, uh, bicycling. And we went to a, there's a trail close to where I live, a couple hours from where I live, but me and a couple other, my wife and a couple other couples went bicycling. And um, I'm not like a... I don't do it a lot, right? Like, I'm not a biker. <laughs> so, I'm bicycling, and they're coming at me, so I'm gonna, sorry. Let me go standard. Maybe up the tempo a little more expressive. Um, and it was, it was, the trail is relatively narrow. It, it's wide enough to get two bikes, where you can have two bikes next to each other, but I, I, I was trying to be mindful of people coming up to pass me because I'm, you know, we were taking our time, we weren't hurrying. Um, and so I looked back to see if somebody's behind me, and the second I turned around, I got hit in the face with a branch, so that hurt a little bit. All right, we got Minotis out here, little Cabo. See, that's, he's young. That was a terrible shot. like our tactical change has helped a little bit. When it looks like a team's coming at me, especially wide there, I, 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 I pull back a little. Yeah. Mm. You can see they've got a high line. This team is young. Like right now, Dalrymple, George, Nardella, um, 
Rubalcaba. These are all draft picks. So now they've pulled back. So can watch them score on me before I can get my change in. This always happens to me. I just, okay, get the ball. Lay it back to Derek. But the one thing about the Open Cup, uh, yeah, Lundqvist. Lundqvist has really, really irritated me this season. He is... Uh, and watch this pass. He's made mistakes like that time and time again this year. But yeah, again, I feel like you know, I, the AI will make a change. I'll see it. Okay, apologies. I don't know what happened there, but something cut out <laughs> right after that LA United goal. Um, I didn't realize it until after I finished the game. So um, I will go ahead and show you what happened. We'll look first at the goal. Um, yeah, the goal that you saw where stinking Lungfist, which Lungfist has really been frustrating this season. He's made. He somehow has a high rating, but he does crap like this all the time, where he just lays it back for Vasquez, who easily puts it away. Um, Lundqvist just delivered him that goal on a platter, so now I'm behind the eight ball. Um, it was another case of, uh, and we're, I was talking about this when the video cut out. It feels like the AI will make a change, and so I, I'll see it, and I'll adapt, but before I can make my change, boom, goal. And so then... I'm screwed. So, um, so Vasquez scores that. We go into halftime down one to nothing, and then I get a, a pretty well worked goal here. Um, about six minutes in. Well, I guess. Wow, this looks like this is gonna be a long highlight. <laughs> yeah. So, well, we'll just watch the whole thing. Um, so we get a shot <clears throat> that Atlanta starts out, but we win the ball back in their half, which is what we try to do. And then we yeah, we get a nice well worked goal. And this is a long highlight. I think we it goes into at least the <clears throat> Yeah, so and yeah, you there you see is a short cross from Benotes to Rubalcaba. So then we're level. And Martinez scores on a nice direct free kick, which um I just before that game I said I needed more goals out of him I don't expect him to score like messy good level goals but you know at least five to ten a year and so then he makes that free kick which <clears throat> is rare at FM so it's good to get a direct free kick goal uh, and I had a chance to put it away but of course Ronaldo Pena misses the, this penalty and I'd I swear I only make about half my penalties. Maybe it's my players, but it feels like there's too many penalty misses now in FM. It's one of those situations where they overcorrected, I think. Um, but we got the win, so we advance. And now we're playing FC Cincinnati in the open in the round of 16 in the Open Cup. So, um, yeah, good you know good result again. But it's another it's a type of game that I have. I I can't I just I can't find the net. And as much as I would like, um, but you know, hey, wins a win, right? And in, in a cup, in a cup tie, you you survive and advance. You get to the next round, and that's what we did. So we're still alive, still playing for the cup, trying to defend our cup championship. Um, and so the situation is good. And looking ahead, my plan is to pretty much immediately start playing younger guys. Um, and we'll just we'll look quickly at the squad, some of the players that I plan on getting more first-team appearances for, which obviously you can tell. I've already gotten pretty much everybody in at least once or twice. But um, here on the bench, I want to start getting Christopher some more appearances, a center back. Um, he's a three-and-a-half-star prospect. That's good. So I, you know, I want to start playing him more. Connor Thomas, I've already been rotating him at, I think right back is where I usually play him. But he can play either side. So... Um, I need to get some more appearances for him. Get him developed as a wing back, because um, that's kind of what I'm playing with right now. Um, Delgado, you know, maybe some. Um, Mimo needs some appearances. He's um, he's not like a great prospect, but he's good enough. He's a, he could 
I could develop him into an asset that I could trade or sell. So, but I need to get him some first team appearances. Um, Arnold is a guy I'm trying to retrain him as a right wing. Um, so I, I need to get him more appearances. Um, uh, Leo Xavier, he's a he's a young designated player, so I'm already getting him a lot. But you know he's young, so he needs he needs more time. Um, and then Nick Allen, who I've really not gotten much to this during the regular season. But really, all those bottom three, Nick Allen at wing, um, Rodrigo Torres is at the number 10 spot. I, I sub him in a lot, but I tell he doesn't get a lot of starts, so I need to get him some more starts. And then my left wing back few of the future, Andrew Amick. So, um, so that's the deal. Uh, I will probably reconvene maybe the All-Star break in July. Maybe we'll live com this FC Dallas game to see if we can hang on to the uh, Texas Derby. So, this is Uncle Sam FM signing off. See you next time.